<laughs> What's going to rise? Webster style. Brian said, you know what it is. It's another NRW checkpoint. Brian, how are you doing today? Doing all right. How about yourself? No, are you off mute? <laughs> I am. <laughs> she let us go. <laughs> okay, all right. She let you go. I, I've, I've heard the Renaissance tour has been something else. So, yes, extremely amazing. I'm quite uh, taken aback. I mean, you know, it's Beyonce. So I was expecting greatness, but then just over exceeded that. So I'm like, wow, worth the money. I understood. We'll, we'll, we'll get to where you're talking about that later. Let's talk about some right. games right now. <laughs> so this week we have a plethora of games. There's one real heavy hitter that eh, I guess we care about. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but we're not talking about that one right now. We're talking about first up we have Everspace to drop it for the PS5, Xbox Series S and X is an action simulation. Um, it's from Rockfist Games. So Everspace 2 is a fast-paced single player spaceship shooter with exploration in space and on planets, tons of loot, RPG elements, mining and crafting, experience an exciting sci-fi story set in a vivid, handcrafted open world of secrets, puzzles, and perils. Okay. Now we are not watching the trail for this one, but I have a interesting story and an interesting story about this one. So this okay. one is very different from the original Everspace. And the original Ever Everspace was just kind of a space shooter game. Mm. But because of the success that the first game had on Game Pass, they were able to take that money and make the second game even larger. Okay, now you know that's that's uh that's what you call a successful game, right? A success story in the gaming space, and I appreciate stuff like that. Exactly, like, it it should always well not always, but in situations like this, because this this studio is not very big, is it? There, I don't believe so. I don't remember if this one's the Everspace Two is dropping on Game Pass or not. I didn't see that. Actually, I didn't look up the list. Because one of our games this week is on Gamecast, but that's actually a game I've been waiting for for a while, so I knew okay. that was coming to Game Pass. But I, I would bet even money that Everspace 2 is coming to Game Pass is not. Check it out anywhere. Yeah, it sounds like a dope game. And yeah. from a studio that seems to be uh, passionate about the, the um, franchise. They took the money and made a second game? Okay. Right. And made a big call re up, so. <laughs> exactly. Call a re up. Uh, <laughs> next up with re ups, we actually have a sequel to a game which I've never heard before, but there are plenty of games that we've never heard before. Heard of before. Right. So, this one is Hammer Watch 2 is an action game from Crack Show Games developer Modus Games as the publisher. Gather your heroes and journey beyond the dungeons of Castle Hammer Watch to explore a pixelated world like never before. Aid King Rowling's resistance with helping villagers along the way. Battle Beast, finish off hordes of the undead, and face the forces of evil. Okay. I should have pulled that trailer, but I didn't. But we are not watching trailer, but that sounds pretty good, especially if it's pixelated. You know, I like a good pixelated uh, yeah. battle as much as the anyone. Yeah. That seems pretty cool. It's, just, it's coming to all of the, well, no, it's just been Series X. Oh, PC only. Yeah, PC only for it. I think the consoles okay. are coming out later, if I remember okay. correctly. That's been a theme lately as well. So I wonder what's going on with that. Um, probably the same thing. <laughs> no. Yeah, I oh, wonder what's well, going on. You know on. what? Probably smaller studios, just like the whole Baldur's Gate 3 situation. Yeah. So it makes sense. It makes sense. Starting out on the PC and then, you know, when the money come in, spread right. it out. Right. So we go from a game that's only on PC to a game that's on everything. Okay. Uh, this <laughs> is Moving Out 2. is on PS4, 5, Xbox One, oh, SX, like, which yeah. in PC. We are watching a trailer for this one. Uh, action simulation from SMG Studios. Uh, Devon Games as the developer. Team 17 as the publisher. Moving Out is back and wackier than ever. And now with online play. Return mm. to pack more and use your moving skills across brand new dimensions and some old favorites. Help rebuild, excuse me, smooth moves and become an all-star fart. Oh, goodness <laughs> gracious. 
Furniture <laughs> arrangement and relocation technician. Lord. <laughs> Why oh. I should not have been surprised with that one. Right. This sounds do we I feel like moving out one when did that come out? The first moving out. So I feel like, I don't know. It's been a while, but maybe in the last two years. I feel it like seemed like a game, game that came out that long ago. Yeah, I feel like we've discussed this before. Yeah. But I'm interested. This it sounds like a, a a kooky game with a lot of personality. Right. I agree. I agree. Next up, we have Wayfinder. We are watching trailers for this. This is on a PS4, 5, and PC. An mm -hmm. RPG from Airship Syndicate as the developer and Digital Extremes as the publisher. Become a Wayfinder and unlock the powers with their powers as you choose your path and playstyle while pushing back a hostile force that is overtaking your world. Control the chaos as you directly shape and customize the endless adventures you go on with friends because Wayfinders are strong together interesting yeah so we're watching a trailer for that so i'm interested to see okay. what the game is about me too. okay now next up we have how should i put this <laughs> the game of the week which shouldn't exist right all right that's the way of putting it nicely yeah because go ahead <laughs> Look, we talk about game companies <laughs> stupid asinine Bullshit. Um, <laughs> sorry, kids. Uh, decisions that they make, but the fact that Rockstar is everybody wanted to remaster Red Dead Redemption. No, 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 no. What they do? No. They just ported it. No remaster. No nothing. They just ported it to the Switch and the PS4, and they have the nerve to charge fifty dollars for it. Right, which is crazy. Given that right. I'm pretty sure it was fifty dollars when it came out thirteen years ago, it was probably yeah. sixty. But still, right. I can buy that game on the Xbox on Xbox right now, backs compatibility for thirty bucks, and I think the DLC is mm -hmm. another ten. Okay, so I can I can buy it physically for thirty off of Amazon with all the stuff they're charging fifty dollars mm -hmm. for, and I'm quite sure Red Dead was on. PS3. But I'm saying like I'm if I'm not mistaken, it was it was very much uh accessible in the why are they why are they putting this out again? I don't I can understand the switch because it's never been know. there. And well, of course there's no backwards compatibility with the PS uh five and the three. Yeah, but the the game is on PlayStation Plus is like you know, you know how to, you know how to, they have PlayStation now and then they merged yeah. everything. Oh, into, they have cloud play? Not cloud play. The game is, you can get the game. I don't know if I'm how to describe it. Okay. Like, kind of like Game Pass. Like, it's there. Right. But it's only available if you have the PlayStation Premium Plus, PlayStation Plus Premium. Yeah, okay. And it's a part of like the back catalog thing that they have. I don't understand why Rockstar does the dumb shit that they do sometimes. And I mean, then they put it on PlayStation 4. Yes. Knowing that we are... backwards compatible with PlayStation. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I, I, don't, I don't understand the play here, guys. Me either. Look, $50. let me tell you, at least the Xbox version, they upscale it from the Xbox 360 version they enhance it up to the Xbox, what is it, Xbox One X. Mm -hmm. But like, even that. Like, but they're not, even, they're not even doing it with these. It's just a straight dump. I don't, I would really be interested. <laughs> maybe Rock, maybe Rockstar, wait, because that's, Rockstar is Red Dead's producer, right? Yes. Maybe they're, maybe they're trying to just pull whatever, <laughs> put together whatever little pities they can get. So that they can go ahead and finally put out this um, Red Dead Auto Six that everybody's waiting on. I, I don't know. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense, especially since they're making hand over. I mean, they're making money with Grand Theft Auto Online. Mm -hmm. So I don't understand why they would need to do such a lazy ass port job like this. I don't either th this is this is. I mean, we we had that whole thing, the debacle of the. Right remasters of the uh first three not for well gta 4 
GTA Vice City and GTA 3. Uh -huh. We had those re remasters because we know all the issues that they had in downgrades and some regards compared to the original game. Right. I'm starting to think Rockstar doesn't like gamers. And <laughs> they tired of everybody talking shit. I mean, on seriously, oh, you, <laughs> well, you you get when you give a shit, we talk shit, right? And just the fact that this is you really just dumping a thirteen year old game on the Switch specifically, no enhancements, no nothing, and you're charging fifty bucks. Did The Witcher even come out at fifty bucks? The Witcher three. <laughs> I sure. mean, they got The Witcher three running on the Switch. I I don't think it came out. Of, I it might have come out at fifty. It I, might have come out at fifty. I'm really confused. Exactly. Like genuinely, I'm I'm looking at the I'm looking at the PlayStation like store, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's that's different. I, this game is available. Like, why would I pay fifty dollars for this? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I don't understand. Well, oh, I guess cause, oh, because it's on PS. It's the PS4 version, but the PlayStation Three version runs fine if you can stream it onto your PlayStation. I think that's what it is, since it's streaming and not downloadable. I don't get it. And mm -hmm. their Red Dead Redemption Two. The the one with all the bells and whistles, the, the one with all of the everything, it's right. only thirty dollars. Right. Yeah. How, exactly. How you charging thirty for the new new? Right. But you charging Ridic fifty for the old old? Ridiculous. <laughs> right. Makes no sense. Oh, okay. <laughs> Moving on. Let's talk about some. <laughs> right. I don't get that. Look. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you guys understand when we like something, we like something. What we call bullshit when we see it in the gaming industry. Yeah, I don't. I, don't think, is, I can't even call that a cash grab because who who would be like dumb enough which to pay that? Okay. <laughs> no, no, and, and I don't mean as far as dumb enough. I mean that is the only platform that makes any sense for trying to grow new users for that game. I mean, yes, yeah, the Switch would make somewhat sense, but. $50 though. Yeah, like, I, I agree. That that should have been a $39.99 game at the most. At, at yeah, the most. at the most. And it need to have come with at least one of the DLC attached. Well, it to comes it. with the like it's a whole package. So okay. the, the nightmare, like all the DLC is there. It still doesn't justify 50 bucks in my opinion. It doesn't. But I can see I can make more of a case for that though. If they're gonna have all of the DLC attached and everything like that. It's still not not fifty dollars still, but I can see them like reselling the game with everything combined and attached. Because it's like you can't play the DLC without the base game anyway. Yeah, but it's no upgrades, no nothing. And yeah, it's just still the thirteen same game. year old game. Yeah, like that's oh, that, that is such a slap in the face to 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 consumers. Not just get consumers, like y'all just think people stupid. <laughs> Don't buy this game, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't get. Don't <laughs> look. We we need to send these game companies a message that we will not tolerate bullshit like this. Right. Like seriously. Yeah, just, like just don't get, buy this uh, game. Just get Red Dead Two with everything on there. It's on no, sale. I, I honestly like don't get Rockstar on. any money because <laughs> no, seriously. No dollars for you. No, because this is <laughs> they. You look at this. You look at what they did last year with GTA Remaster and how that was some absolute garbage, especially on PC when it came out. And then not just that, they delisted all of the original games, so you had to buy the bundle if you wanted any of them. Like those sort of business practices. Like yeah. it's it's so I can't say it's anti-consumer, but it's just so like gamers want you like I don't want I want to buy the original version. Let me buy the original version. I don't want to buy the remastered version. I don't want to have to buy the bundle. Like what the things that they've done have just been just such a, a slap in the face to what gamers want. Yeah. Especially from a company that makes so much money from the GTA series. Yeah. I also say don't give them like Speak with your wallet and don't give them any money. Like, yeah. don't buy any of their games. I'm not calling for a boycott. I'm just saying, 
if, <laughs> if we really want to show these companies that we're not going to take this bullshit, yeah, we don't buy from those companies. Agree. You think like I couldn't even tell you the last time I bought a Rockstar game. Not Me because either. I've like I'm not a GTA person. Me um, even Red Dead, I'm like, looks cool, just never was my type of game. It's GTA, but like different settings. Yeah, <laughs> That's pretty much. much. Yeah. So their games have never appealed to me. So I'm not I am not a customer. So mm. i I don't think I've ever purchased a Rockstar game. And I think about it. I think outside of the GTA franchise, I used to play Grand Theft Auto a lot. San Andreas is still probably like one of my favorite games like ever. Just because it was so good, it had so much to do. They finally made the league character black, and it was like Along with that, just came all of these other amazing things that they introduced to the Grand Theft Auto franchise for the first time. Right. But outside of that, um, I think they, don't they have racing games too? I think Rockstar was was responsible for like Midnight Club or something like that. One yes. of the racing games they did do Midnight Club, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah that's it. Once that they stopped doing Midnight Club, yeah. I was like, okay, Rockstar don't want no money for real. They just focused yeah. on Grand Theft Auto. And then Red Dead came out, and I was like, this is Grand Theft Auto again with just, like, different characters and different, like, setting. <laughs> it's, like, it's, it's Grand Theft Auto, but it's, like, in the South and, like, some New Orleans-type environment. Basically, yeah, exactly. But, all right. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, we can talk about that for a while in gaming. Let's right. talk about something else as far as some new, new games. Uh, we have... Next up, Shadow Gambit. I want to say Shadow Cabinet, like coming, but with Shadow <laughs> Gambit, uh, the Curse Crew on the PS5, Xbox Series systems, and PC is a strategy game from Mimi Me Games. Okay, okay, all about them. Welcome to the Lost Caribbean. In this stealth action game, join a ghost ship with a living mm. soul and a sim and an ensemble assemble. Excuse me, a cursed pirate crew. Embracing magical powers to defy the menacing army of the Inquisition, who stands between you and the mysterious treasure of the legendary Captain Mordecai. Now, I should have pulled the trailer for this. This seems really interesting. Now, I was about to say, we watching? Okay, that's not interesting, though. It does sound very interesting. Getting a lot of pirate games and pirate theme games lately. Yeah. I feel like ever since they pushed that one pirate game back. Yeah, or, Skull and Bones. Yes. Yeah. Everybody been trying to get theirs out. Yep, yep, I agree. All right, next up is a game we are watching the trailer for, and is I think it's one that uh, we we are certainly going to geek out of when we uh, geek out about when we see the trailer. And it is uh, Bomb Rush Cyberpunk is an action game on a Switch and PC uh, mm -hmm. from Team Reptile. Bomb Rush Cyberpunk is a one second per second of advanced funk style battle rival okay. crews and dispatch militarized police to conquer the five barrels of new amsterdam become ai city <laughs> new amsterdam the right. five barrels of new amsterdam right okay so all right i'm interested in that all Trailer right later next yeah. up is a game we really don't have to talk about too much because it's not too much to say about it right the same game from last year right is Madden NFL 24. You know what sports, excuse me, for those of our listeners and viewers that are not in the United States, it is American football. If you don't, there you go. If I say football, you know, soccer. somewhere else is like, yeah, it's, it's <laughs> what we call soccer. Right. Why do we call it soccer? Anyway, that's another question. Because, because America is, well, colonizers. I say that. That's why. Right. Okay. Leave it there. <laughs> They take people's things and they try to make it seem like it's new and that they did it first and change the name and the culture behind it and everything. Yep. I'm mad about that, actually. I feel like soccer would have been really, really popular here in the States had, had the originators of the NFL just decided to call their shit something else and let soccer be football like it's supposed to be. But different conversation. Different girls. Maybe when FIFA is announced, we'll discuss well, it's not called FIFA anymore. It's FC24, remember? Okay. Why? Wow. Oh, they we did talk about that. Sure. They didn't want to pay them the money, which I totally understand. If FIFA yeah. wanted all you give is a name. We ain't got to pay you for the name. Exactly. You want to double your price? Be something you, else. So, mm, you know what we would <laughs> say. F you. Peace. But Smart. okay. <laughs> Getting back to Madden, Tiburon's the developer. EA Sports is in the game, is the publisher. It's Madden. 
Right. What else you got to say? Nothing. Yeah. All right. Last Wait, who's up. on the cover? Did they put the cover out yet? I don't know. Okay. I can tell you. I do. <laughs> that's the only thing we can Look, say that's changed. <laughs> I, I haven't purchased a NFL football game in since NFL 2K. Five. That's fair. That's fair. So I, I think my last my last NFL game was on probably PlayStation 2, PlayStation 1, whichever. Probably PlayStation 2. Whenever they took away, because NFL Street was really good. But then when they start the whole the whole licensing thing and they had to yeah. shut that company down, I was like, you know what? I'm yeah. done for real, for real. For exactly. When EA bought the exclusive license, there was no yeah. point in me even. And I'm not a humongous football fan, but I I me played either. several non Madden football games. I played yeah. uh, 2K on the Dreamcast, and then my Xbox. I played the uh, NFL Fever games mm-hmm. on on okay, Xbox yeah, yeah. as well. But when Madden bought that license, I was like, there's no point. It's no right. point in caring about football games anymore because they, it's Madden. They're gonna if you don't like Madden, then there's nothing else for you. So right, no alternatives. Exactly. All right. Last up is the one game I've been looking for all week. <laughs> yeah. One game I've been looking for all week. <laughs> ah, it is the Texas Chainsaw <laughs> Massacre uh, on PS4, five Xbox One, SX. PC, um, no switch, and it's mm-hmm. on Game Pass. So right. it's an action game from Sumo Digital and as a developer and Gun Interactive um, as the publisher. Mm-hmm. Take on a role of one of the notorious Slaughter family or their victims in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, third person asymmetrical horror experience based on the groundbreaking and iconic 1974 horror film. Experience the mad and macabre for yourself in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Now, Brian, are you a fan of horror movies at all? <laughs> Slightly. <laughs> Slightly. The yeah. now, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, that is one that I saw. I'm aware of the entire franchise. I've been keeping up with it as best I could since I saw the first one way back when, when I probably shouldn't have been watching it. So I can relate with you here. I'm interested. Leatherface, you know, he made me like want to understand the uh, the rest of the, you know, the big bad villains in the horror space. Got you. So I, 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 I like uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. That one with, with Trey Songz in there. Wait, I think he died. Didn't Trey Songz? Oh, that was the, yeah, the remake. Uh, the yeah. remakes that they did. I didn't see those. And that one was funny. Now I have I'm this not... thing about the re- 2000s horror movie. I have a thing about. Of course, I did love the uh, Friday the 13th remake, if you want to really call it a remake. But um, yeah, I stayed away from a lot of those just because I wasn't feeling them like that. But I've, I've heard good things about uh, the Texas Chainsaw remakes. Yeah, they're not bad. So I personally am a fan of the first one, but I am actually more of a fan of the second one um, because it was just so it's one of those movies where, you know, how you watch movies as, as a kid. And yes, why was I watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre part two as a kid? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> I can't even blame my mom on this one. <laughs> <laughs> it's like my, my aunts and uncles. But anyway, my this is my dad's fault. Like my dad's fault for Texas Chainsaw Massacre part two and return, um, uh, return to living dead. Those are both his fault. Um, okay. But as one of those movies I saw as a kid, and you know, you you see the gore, mm-hmm. and with part one as well. The surprising thing with part one, there's really no gore or blood or people getting chopped up no. with a chainsaw. And they see that probably was the reason that I was like, who would it? Because like, yeah, you see them getting chased, and he definitely, you know, he got the chainsaw. It's it's out right. there, but. The most gruesome part was just like him taking their face off and like making his own face with it. Now that was like freaky to me. I never seen that like any any kind of right. way. And then I know on the first one or whatever, um, after the movie is over, like the main part of the movie, they mm-hmm. have the little oh, this is a real story. Yeah, 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 yeah they yeah, never yeah. caught him and all this other stuff. And from there, I was like, oh, okay, so this. It's more like some true crime stuff that just right. went way left. 
Right. And I was just, I'm like, okay, cool. I was hooked ever since. Obviously, um, I believe, I don't know if, if Chainsaw Massacre, the franchise, like is a universal, universal IP. I don't know but, who owns it, actually. I think it's yeah. still because they just did a, a Netflix movie, um, I think earlier this summer, which I still okay. haven't watched. They did it uh Netflix. I don't know who owns the IP. Okay. But this is one when I saw this, like the, I think the trailer for this came out like a year ago or so. Mm-hmm. And you know, we see what is it, Dead by Daylight. So you got those games where you're trying to survive and everything, and then uh the Friday 13th game came out, which is a- another cautionary tale for live service games. Uh, but <laughs> that where you are, huh? No, I'm, I'm just laughing. You good? No, no, because it's shutting down, I think, in, in the next month because the licensing. Oh, okay. So that's where you're you play as four people and Jason's trying to kill you. So it's like one versus yes. four. I was watching yeah. my brother play that game a couple yeah. weeks ago. So I, this. That one had promise, but go ahead. Yeah. So this is the same team that did the Jason game, the Friday 13th game. So now you're okay. playing the Slaughter family versus four victims. Oh, okay. So, okay. So, so they're basically taking the gameplay mechanics from the Friday the 13th game. Yeah. Slapping the Chainsaw Massacre. Yes, but it looks a lot more intense. Uh, we're going to watch a trailer for this one. Definitely had to, but I watched some gameplay the okay. other day. From people who were playing early copies and i was like i was impressed uh, mm-hmm. more so because not so much the victims and those things are pretty form uh formulaic as far as what they got to do to get out but with right. the slaughter family they're in, in addition to trying to kill the victims they are tasking things that they're tasked to do in the environment as well like with grandpa and some other characters as part of the family so i thought that was really interesting as well okay yeah that sounds cool all right, so that's Texas Chainsaw Massacre. We can get the trailer for that, but first up, we have the trailer for Wayfinder. Oh, well, Wayfinder, talk about it. Wayfinders, cool. do you remember the fall? The gloom descended on Skylight. You rallied to protect the beacon and paid a terrible price. This style reminds me of something. And the world was broken. Um, it reminds me of uh, like Jack and Daxter. This world needs champions. Mixed with um, well, I can't. It, it kind of give me like Smite. Kind of look like Smite a little bit, but yes, that's what I'm thinking of. Oh, okay. Battle Chasers. That's why. That's what it reminds me of. Okay, Battle Chasers. But see, one thing I noticed about Smite is it don't all the way look like, like you know how they the the trailers and the what do they call those things like the cutscenes and everything look a little yes. different in actual gameplay. That's the only thing. But that looks cool though. Yeah, it does. is it okay? So that's uh, that's just on what is that? Wayfinder PS4, five, and PC. Okay might check that that is for whatever reason i feel like that's gonna come to playstation plus fairly soon like really quick after it's release i'm gonna check that out i'm gonna right. see what's going on with that it right, looks good next yeah. up we have bomb rush cyberpunk <laughs> oh you know what this reminds me of <laughs> Jack Bryan Radio. Yeah. Which, bring it back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This is what is so inspired by Jack Bryan Radio. Yeah. Cool. Why those characters just remind me of the, the uh, mass people from what's, what's the show called where they be killing people like that in the game? Oh, yeah. This is really cool looking. Got a fire uh, little soundtrack there. Yeah. 
look, I hope this game does well. Um, <laughs> simply because Sega needs to see, hey, we need to just at least port Jet Grind Radio, Jet Grind, Jet Set Radio, whatever the hell you want to call it. Um, right. Look, just port it. I, I, I think it's backwards compatible on the Xbox, mm. but I think it was one of those. I actually think no. I think it was the Xbox Live Arcade version of Jet Set Radio. So, and I believe that's delisted if I remember correctly. So that mm. sucks. Yeah. So if you don't have it now, you can't get it. All right. <laughs> next up, we are moving out with moving out dose. Moving out again. Okay, so I was thinking about something else with the first move out. So it's like a little party game. Okay, yeah. Well, oh, it said it had online play in this one, so I'm assuming there wasn't online play on the first one. Okay, which <laughs> not an online play is there. This game is like a completely different game than the first. Interesting. Definitely. Remind me of like Fall Guys a little bit, but um but you moving out. I'm assuming you got a certain time limit to get everything out the house. Yeah, it's like a clock going up or down towards the left side of the screen on some yes. of these missions. Yeah. Okay. Good. I'm not mad at that. No, not at all. I would definitely play that. All right. And last up. We go to the Slaughter Family House with Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Texas Chainsaw. You think this is a party? Can't count on no one around here. You're only making it harder on yourselves. <laughs> That's it. Just a little farther. All right. At least he won the first one to die in a trailer. (laughs) (laughs) He ain't going to make it, though. Keep going. He was. was For real. Don't stop. Just go run. Right. Right. I like, I like that trailer because I feel like I'm watching the Shaz version of the movie. Oh, it really okay. captured that. And one of the things I saw, there was some other trailers I watched. Uh-huh. I, I'm excited for this game and again, maybe because I've, I'm so much experienced with the lore, mm-hmm. the other characters they could bring in from the Slaughter family. I'm also interested because I don't. I mean, this movie would be 50 years old. Um, next year like are the uh, original actors still alive I feel like the the dude that was playing the uncle that sounded like him but I could have sworn he died years ago Mm. I don't know but they're like other characters like even from Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 they could bring in their um, locales I saw some like the caves and stuff that was from part 2 so I'm excited for what they could do with this game considering the lore of the movies and the different locales now mind you i will say this i haven't seen every single one mainline i saw one and two i did not watch three because even as a kid the premise with leatherface and a bunch of cannibals sounded absolutely stupid um <laughs> to me. uh and and that's saying a lot from you know, watching every single Jason movie, but you know what I mean. Anyway, <laughs> I'm excited for this game. It looks really fun, and I'm not really big on it, the isometric stuff or the mm-hmm. asymmetrical stuff because one, you're totally dependent on online play, right? Personally speaking, um, two, my biggest concern with this, and this is what I'm not feeling with games like this because they're so online focused, and you need the online functionality. Mm-hmm. These licensed games. What happens when the license runs out? Well, because I mean, we're seeing that with the now Friday 13th, 
the licensing issues. Yes, I know it's different with the things they've yeah. dealt with with the licensing over the past two years with the court battles and everything. But there's still a licensing issue that's there. And that game will potentially go away even without what's happened. And what about this? Right. What, like we see games delisted all the time because of licensing a publisher loses the rights to the license. That's cool and, and all and good when it's on your hard drive and you don't need an online connection to play. And you, d- but, and once it's delisted, you can still download it. Something like this, you need that connectivity. Once right. it's gone, you you can't get it again. Once service shut down, you essentially paid, you rented a game for a year or two, whatever it is, for 60, 70 bucks. Yeah. I don't think anybody wants to rent anything because if it's for a couple years for 60, 70 bucks and just have like, you know, 10 gigabytes of just useless data stored on your <laughs> hard drive of your, your system. So yeah, I, true. that is my biggest concern with someone. It looks like a great game. If you're into those sort of games and it looks like it's really awesome. You like Texas Chainsaw Massacre like that. It looks really cool. But then in the long run, what's going to happen when their license goes? And that's, that's right. my biggest concern about something like this. Right. I agree. And I hope that this game is, I don't know. Cause the, the whole Texas Chainsaw Massacre, like, the whole story or whatever, they weren't just killing people. Like they were using their body parts and things to do stuff. I wonder Chilling. if they Yeah. <laughs> I wonder if they're uh gonna incorporate like some of that piece of the lore into the game just to give you another element of like a reason to actually kill these people or catch these people. I don't know. I'm just thinking of some different ways. Cause like if it's just going to be you running around as the Slaughterhouse family just killing people or whatever, then it's like, that's that's Stand by Daylight and the game they just bought to cut off the, the well, um, Jason game. So I wonder what else is going to be like attached to it. That's well, you know, you, you bring up a very good point. I think that's my question. I In the trailers I saw, there mm-hmm. are other things that you do as a part of, you know, killing the, the, the people. So, mm-hmm. you know, chili cooking the chili or obtaining the meat for the chili you know okay that could be part of it um, right as they extend the game that's what i say i think that with this especially since they have different playable villain characters specifically unlike mm-hmm. a, the jason game where it was you played as jason jason's a killing machine right there's not really a lot for jason to do outside of find you kill you <laughs> right that's <laughs> what, what i'm mean. saying that's what you expect <laughs> but in this case there is Dare I say it, there's a bit more humanity to the Slaughter family than Jason Voorhees. Yeah. So it makes sense for there to be aspects of their gameplay that extend beyond just killing the the, the victims. Yeah, I agree. So, all right, well, that's our take on the game. So we see, Brian, mm-hmm. what's going on with you this week? <laughs> well, um... Well, I'm writing out this next episode of Talk of Play Broadcast. Obviously, I just had a, a wonderful time at the Renaissance Tour, so I'll probably be spending a majority of the episode just recapping all of that because things didn't go how I wanted to go. Yeah, but I, but I was able, I still made the show like right on time, but it was hectic all the way up until I got to my seat. So. I have things to discuss there. Some new music is coming out. Quavo um, about to put an album out. I'm really interested to see what that sounds like, you know, given the whole, you know, passing of takeoff and everything like that. It's supposed to be dedicated to him. Um, uh, what else? Some, I don't know. I've been watching stuff on TV, but I don't know if I'm going to talk about anything in particular. And then right. games. Um, I'm hacking away at this midnight suns uh like game or whatever the story is really impressing me i was not expecting it to be this deep in the like marvel lore with all the extra characters that they're bringing in and how they tie each character stories together like in this whole i don't know crash kind of way i don't know it's, it's a really cool game so 
I'll probably be spending a lot of time talking about that, as well as the new season of Overwatch, which has some new things I dislike because they did not tell us we was going to have to pay for these story missions, which is crazy because they told us they was going to give us this stuff in the game free at launch. But we'll talk about it. Uh, look, the, we already talked this, about Rockstar. At, look, Activision Blizzard, they, they are not immune. They not. And they it's do. crazy because like Overwatch 1, it was like a really it's a really good game. Everything was like fine with it. Of course, there were some little moments in there you could have microtransactions or whatever, but it was never like forced on you like it is now. Overwatch 2 with this battle pass and some of the things you can't get unless you buy it. Now they add these story missions, charging $15 or whatever. I've seen some things regarding that that make it maybe a little bit different, and I'm still trying to research or whatever. But as far as now, I'm like, you could have just told me it was going to be a DLC. I probably would have been more comfortable with that. <laughs> like, and that's the biggest, the one of the biggest complaints about Overwatch 2. Yeah, but yeah, all of that and more in the Talk Play broadcast. Nothing else really going on for me. What about you? Uh, let's see, I just dropped episode 158 of the Soto Tony Geek podcast, so it's out right now. The time of this mm-hmm. recording, uh, going back to my interview with uh, Bourgeois Latte of Lava, Latte Java radio talking about her passion for music and how she started doing her radio show i'm um, talking about texas chainsaw massacre is my download of the week um, <laughs> right. and also talking about my first impressions of uh tyrannosaurus rex from zoology perfumes and then at the time of this recording i literally just finished taping an interview with sean crenshaw uh when the masterminds behind ovation fragrances ovation for men uh talking about his passions and how ovation came about and also talking about a lot of the things that they're doing they've been really heavily uh with the NI- nil space with promoting and marketing their ovation for men sport which is coming out in a couple weeks so uh probably by the time this goes up that interview will be up on Webster style uh, on the YouTube. If not, it'll be up very soon because I'll probably okay. edit it tonight anyway. So <laughs> that's what's going on here. But you, of course, you know where you are. Nerds yeah. rule the world. Uh, going back to uh, a movie that is about to be 40 years old next week, next month, <laughs> next year. Oh, my goodness. I'm getting old. No, rule the world. <laughs> Make sure you follow us on Twitter at the NRW on Instagram News Wednesday. Of course, you're currently on YouTube, so make sure you like, share, and subscribe. 